You're listening to Saturday Morning Media. And now, back to our show. I have a lot of really cool friends who do a lot of really cool things. I wanted to make it a goal to sit down with these friends and spend about 15 minutes or so getting to know them better and find out about their past, present, and their future. The result is this show. My name is Grant Pachoco, and this is 15 Minutes With. Dan Wright is the creator of the absolutely amazing Paint by Monster web series. Dan, thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, thank you, Grant. It's a privilege, and I'm honored to talk to all of your fans and guests. Well, uh, I am absolutely excited to to have you on the show, and we're going to talk by, about Paint by Monster and all that kind of stuff, but I would like to know, where did you grow up? Muncie, Indiana. And is that where you're currently residing now? <laughs> yeah, weirdly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so, so growing up in Muncie, what, um, what was the first sort of creative thing that, that captivated your attention? The next Paint by Monster episode, I'm going to do the very first craft project I ever did with my mother. And that was in Michigan when I was four. Um, and so, and so the earliest thing that was art related that I responded to happened in Michigan, not Muncie, but that's really a technicality. It w- I responded creatively to... Whoever was drawing the animation of Spider-Man back in the late 60s, and forgive me that I don't know that name off the top of my head, and I'm sure that I saw Jim Henson's work in Sesame Street then. I'm sure that I must have, but I don't remember that until living in Muncie. Uh, Also, I er I responded very early to the Berenstein Bears. It was the, the very first book I remember ever learning to read was the Bernstein Bears Go on Vacation. Um, mm-hmm. And so that art style, I was also a very early Dr. Seuss fan. And uh, that I very, very early, four years old, wanted to draw the pictures that I was being shown. So my earliest creative anything was drawing pictures, but certainly it was drawing pictures in service of telling stories. Wow. And you mentioned that uh, you did a craft project with your mom. Were your parents creative? Yes, in their own ways. My, my dad was a, a carpenter and um, a, just a very precise person with his carpentry. Um, and my mom was just really crafty. My mom... Uh, in, in my mom spent 25 years as a, a handmade paper sculptor uh, in the end of in the the end of her career, um, but she always sewed and she was always sort of doing some sort of a craft project. My mom was a scout leader and was always having us carve soap or you know make these ghastly macrame things that we made <laughs> or poke glued toothpicks into styrofoam and spray paint them ghastly colors and give them to some unfortunate relative at Christmas time. (laughs) Um, But, you know, craft projects showed up really early. And not only my mom was crafty, but some of my earliest memories of my own grandmother were sitting around her dining room table making things with my cousins. There might be sequins and plastic fruit and exacto knives and cotton batting and little figurines of animals. And so we were to make Christmas uh, ornaments out of these sorts of things on the table, but just about every holiday afforded an opportunity to be around my grandmother's table with cousins as I was growing up making something. And usually she had some examples of things that she had made earlier in the week according to the pattern. And we were encouraged to follow the pattern, but um, I, there were... Uh, Variations on the pattern were allowed early on, so creativity coming into that stuff was, in, I don't want to say encouraged, because we weren't really encouraged to go off model, but there was freedom to do that, and it was fun. I mean, the appreciations of all kinds of things in my life now, I think those things are still bearing fruit in my life. In fact, I think maybe I'm still just doing that. I'm sitting around making stuff at the dining room table. Maybe. Yeah. Well, one thing I love about um, that really comes through in Paint by Monster is your great sense of humor. Do you get that? Was that, you know, was was your family a family that laughed a lot together? Yes, but I I also, I know the roots of this one too, just because of my own history. Um, By the time I was in the first grade, because we often would come home to Muncie to visit and then we moved to Muncie, we were 
often over at my grandmother's house, uh, my parents and I, and I'm, I'm an only child, and I had an, a dear uncle whom I loved, who was only like 18 years older than I am, who had an extensive collection of George Carlin albums. And so by the time I was in the first grade, I had uh, the Class Clown album just completely memorized, every line, line for line, pauses, inflections, all the tonality. And uh, it, was, it was pretty important to hear him say things that got a laugh. And so uh, that's... Surely there were other things that showed up that, you know, were also formative for comedy, but I would say that George Carlin's work early in my own life was the nuclear explosion for all of my com comedic appreciation through the years. It started there. Going through school, like elementary school, junior high, and that stuff, were you still doing art? Yeah, I was. I was always drawing. Um, drawing, I made a connection with drawing really early on in life. Um, I could draw three-dimensional ideas by the time I was in the first or second grade and um, had a pretty decent grasp of anatomy by the time I was 16. When I was in high school, um, from my all four years of high school, I made the weekly drive. It's an hour drive from Muncie to Indianapolis to go to John Heron uh, Art School in Indianapolis. They had Saturday classes where students could come and participate in art classes and uh, most of the things I did I took an animation class but we didn't animate the the really helpful classes were the two solid years of figure drawing just three second poses five second poses 15 second poses half an hour poses which you know once once you have a concept I I had an early concept of gesture drawing as a useful way to get to uh, representing form in space by the time I was 16, 17 years old. So um, drawing well, I, I knew I was aiming myself at drawing and, and really considered drawing meant something to me really early on. So all of the things that I was doing, real, I mean, I say that, and yet like at the same time, I, I was always the MC of all of the shows in middle school, um, I mean, I sang in the choir. I played in the band. I was, I was in drama early. Went to Young Actors Workshop at Muncie Civic Theater with a bunch and met kids all over town. Loved performing. Loved the idea of performing. Um, did every play in high school that there was to do here. Um, had the lead role in a number of those things. Um, you know, sang and danced and did all that kind of performing stuff like. You know, mu music was an early appreciation as well. Like I played trumpet and then French horn in high school. And after high school was sort of done, like, you know, I, <laughs> chicks dig guys who play guitar, not French horn. So um, like, I, okay, I'll learn how to play guitar. Cause I, you know, you can't sing and play French horn either, but you can sing and play guitar. So uh, anyway, all of the performing, all of the creative, everything, uh, you know, it, 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 I was allowed it all in the house and it all came in and I had, I had friends who did those sorts of things too. So I hung out with people who also were very musically oriented and, and the drama kids and the art kids. And oftentimes those are the same kids. So I hung out with those kids. And did you go to any sort of school after high school? Yeah. Um, I went to, I spent three years on in the army. Um, well, I spent three years on active duty. When I came home from active duty, I went to art school for a year and a half. I went to John Heron for a year and a half, but I was married and had kids at that point. So like I, 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 I disenrolled in the GI bill cause I needed the money to, to support my family and then didn't really have money for college. So I probably didn't think that through well. So no, I, I didn't finish college. I, I came out and immediately went to work at a graphic, uh, a vinyl graphic sign shop but really have had sort of a, a fun kind of bounce along career as I've gone. And I'm pretty happy that like, I think had I gotten really, really good at anything, I think I'd have stayed doing that. And so I'm happy for the exploration that I've gotten to do in my career because I mean, like, you know, I draw well enough. Um, and I, I think I, I can write a joke well enough 
But those things have sort of, as I've gone and as I've explored and as I've made at least enough money to indulge my artistic and creative explorations, have just been able to, okay, I wonder what it would be like to go over there and do that. Um, so I'll go do that for a while. And like Paint by Monster seems to, it's the perfect storm, this is the perfect sandbox of all of the stuff that I've ever liked to do. So like, no, I get to do it all here. I can draw, this gives me a format to draw or talk about typography, but it also, I can perform and I can animate and do the, um, uh, even all of the, it's not really part of the show other than every single scene is a special effect. Like I sort of like working in After Effects. I like the, I like even the editing. I like all of the stuff that paint by, that I get to do in the production of Paint by Monster. It's loads of fun. Yeah, well, I I definitely want to talk about Paint by Monster, and because um, when I stumbled across it, it it just blew my mind. It was so great and so fantastic. But uh, kind of before Paint by Monster, I want to talk about you've uh, done a series of commercials that involved puppets as well. And how did you, uh, you have a, kind of a funny story about this, how you got into puppetry, but how did you start doing these commercials and using puppets in those commercials? I am still doing these commercials for the company is Wings, etc. If it's not wrong for me to say, um, I am grateful to them. After I, I did the, I'll go back to my, I was a nationally syndicated cartoonist for five years with King Feature Syndicate out of New York. When I brought that strip to an end, uh, within the year of ending that strip, I was contacted by someone who asked me to come and be sort of an, uh, a gun art gun for hire um, and, and produce a, a cartoon strip called Russell the Leaf. And we met a few times, and at first I, I said no, I wasn't interested in the job. Eventually I said yes, and the person who I was working with in these conversations has wound up becoming one of my deepest friendships in my whole life, Dave Ponce. And uh, he and I did Russell the Leaf together and just yeah, loved each other quick and early and just, wow, we, he's funny and, and we enjoy being together and uh, writing together. And so at the last six months or, of that or so, I started animating and um, then Russell the Leaf came to an end. Dave was gone at that point. Uh, and the the people who were funding that wanted to take their marketing money in a different direction, which was so fine. We got to say a bunch of stuff with Russell. It was really fun. And uh, I, I still, I see their work and think they're just wonderful people. Anyway, um, Dave came out of a background of, of restaurant advertising and had an understanding of, Dave was the uh, marketing director for Ritter's Frozen Custard for about 15 years. And so he understood restaurants at the operational level. And Dave is also the sort of a man who does his homework really, really well. So he began to do some work with Wings, etc., headquartered out of uh, 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 the northern part of Indiana. And he came to me one day. I had begun to do some some uh, illustration work for them and just knick-knacky odds and ends things, whatever, pickup work, whatever Dave had. Uh, what Because Dave knew, you know, like, okay, I, I'm, I'm doing whatever work comes my way at this point, um, which is fine. I mean, there's enough illustration here work, and, and I had done some other animation things and, and had no idea what I was doing next, but, you know, was making it just fine. And Dave came to me one day and said, listen, the Wings Etc. guys have decided that they would like to do um, – they have been spending money on TV, but they're not happy with what their TV is, and they want to know what maybe else could be done. What what can we do? Like for TV, yeah, so it's thinking in 30-second you know, terms of, because that's the length of a TV commercial, and okay, what, what can we do? Well, okay, now you have the problem. I've given you enough of the So puppetry came to me as a result of, for the two or three days that we sat around and asked these questions and thought about that, what, what can we do that would be more sticky that represents the brand culture of who these guys are? And really, you know, that I, I'm, I, it, I, some of those comedic answers to me come when you are more selfish with the thing that you're looking for. And so to me, I ask myself, well, what do I want to watch on TV? What's entertaining to me? about who these people are, or I don't care if it's about them or not, what's entertaining to me? And the answer to that question was, I just want to see a couple of hillbilly chickens sitting at a bar and bitching about life. That's all I really want to see. 
And I mean, you know, I want it to be real hillbilly kind of complaints and griping, you know? Um, so make it fun, make it, make it interesting and just <laughs> wrong. Um, and so we sat and, and Dave said, well, the, uh, so we started, we didn't have puppetry at this point. We just, I started writing jokes because that's our, the editorial content is more important than the answer to how will it be delivered, I think. So we just started writing. And the very first joke I wrote was two chickens sitting at the bar. And the first chicken says to the other one, so she just packed up and left you, huh? And the other chicken says, yeah. The first chicken says, did she go to her mama's? And the, the bigger chicken says, no, nah, she moved in with him. And yeah, and the, damn, I know. What are you going to do, says the first chicken. Well, I, for now, I'm going to sit here and drink this beer. And then I'm going to hunt her down and kill them both. And the first chicken says, they're both chickens, right? And he goes, oh, yeah. Well, there's no law against that, he says. And that was the, that was the whole of the commercial. That was it. Then we, you know, we, we're, we're shilling then for the beer special. But just the first, you know, it was like, no, that's kind of nice. It's, you'd hear that conversation sitting in a bar. <laughs> that kind of works. And so we, I wrote, I don't know, I think we wrote about seven jokes and... So Dave said, well, you know, what, are you thinking animation? What are you thinking? I think, no, I've already done animation now, and it's really labor intensive. I want the juice of animation without the labor of animation. So how are we going to do that? I'm like, well, I think maybe let's think about puppetry. And he said, can, can you do that? Can you build puppets? I said, well, I'm pretty sure I can build some TV pretty puppets. I think I can get there. Okay. All right. Well, yes, let's do it in puppetry. So... <laughs> I came home and I built, I built the first, I mean, I built some things in for as Christmas presents before. And I felt like my wife is just a first rate seamstress. I knew we were going to do, this would be sewn puppets. And I mean, my wife designs wedding gowns and sews them. Um, she's amazing. And so, you know, I, okay, okay I, I was pretty sure I could build the foam skeleton of the puppet. So um, in the third chicken, I got there. And so the third and the fourth chicken are the chickens that I've been using since then um, for Wings Etc. commercials. Well, uh, I'll put a link in the in the description for this episode, but I highly recommend people go check out these commercials because they're so funny. And um, I, I will just sit and watch one after another because they're, they're really hilarious and they're a lot of fun. Um, and there's no, I don't think there's a Wings Etc. anywhere near me, but I definitely want to go there because of these commercials. Um, as we get into Paint by Monster, how did the creation of Easel Monster uh, come about? Because, and the reason I ask this is I know that there is a video online that I think predates Paint by Monster, which is uh, Easel Monster heckling trick-or-treaters as they come to the front door. So uh, how did Easel Monster come about? He was always designed with the idea that I would draw in him. I, I wanted a puppet that I could perform in that was mine. Um, that, I mean, I, <laughs> it was a joke in the house that I created the chicken puppets to be prostitutes. I mean, you know, they're like, no, no, these guys are here to make money. They only exist to make me a living. That's it. But I also wanted a playground that I could go and play in that I could perform with and in. Because, you know, shooting video, it, it, that can be anything now, because uh, I was also sort of doing that in the puppetry, that that kind of thinking came into what we were doing too. Um, so I wanted, I wanted a way to perform. I wanted something, and I drew a picture of a monster teaching drawing because I just I like the I like the inclusive nature of what a monster is. I mean, it's a it just can, it's like a happy face. It can just so immediately represent everybody. Anybody can emote through something like that. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I, I built him out of foam and, and Carrie, my wife and I discussed, um, how, how I, I, I knew I wanted him to be a glove puppet. I wanted to be able to at least manipulate his mouth and one hand. Um, so, and I also had an idea for how I would enter that puppet and perform that hand and the design of that. So Easel Monster came about as we talked through all of the design implications for how I wanted to be able to perform in it and how the, the extra set of monster hands that don't have anything to do with having a puppet body, how I'd use those things to, to capture, um, you know, drawing on the, my drawing board upstairs. 
So Easel Monster came about as a creation of a playground for me to perform puppetry in that was my own creative project that didn't have anything to do with making a living. Well, I, uh, as I said before, Paint by Monster is one of my favorite things on the internet. I think it is so funny. And one of the things I love is that it really is a show for, you know, families and kids, but you will also throw things in there that I think, you know, like one episode you talked about giving matches to kids to play with because you're a monster. And that's what a monster would do is give matches to kids. And, you know, what I love is is just sort of the freedom of there's no censors telling you like, oh, no, no, you can't say that you're going to give matches to kids because but it's funny, you know, like it's it's really hilarious. And, and that's one of the things I love about the show. It's a conversation that I have with myself and with my wife because there are like I have friends that have not let their youngest children watch the copying and stealing episode because there's a bare chested woman represented in art on that. And, you know, I've, I've had I've had church friends ask me the question like, well, how do you deal with, you know, nudity in art and those kinds of things? Like, listen, if I were to take your first grade class to the museum and we pass a booby, and the art happens to be fantastic, and we better talk about that. We're going to stop and talk about that. I am not freaked out by the human body, um, and I, especially in represented in art. In fact, like <laughs> there's an artist in the UK whose name is Chris O'Philly, and he did a piece called "Pimpin' Ain't Easy" that is just masterful piece of art. It's a huge phallus and testicles, okay, with a smiley face on it. And all of these glued on what looked to be bottom halves of pornographic women with, with, with pimp heads right in the middle. So that they look like angel wings surrounding these heads of pimps. And in the bottom, hanging off of this thing, he's carved elephant poop that says, Pimpin' ain't easy in three different pieces of elephant poop. And it's just so amazing. It's perfect. And I told Carrie so many, I was like, I want to show this on Paint by Monster so bad you can't, I can't stand it. And she keeps telling me, no, you better not. Don't, don't, don't do that. <laughs> so there is a line, I guess, that... Uh... <laughs> so there is. And, and, and so far I've not, I've not crossed that. And I, you know, I, and I don't, I don't care to work blue. I don't care to be, I don't want to have a. I don't want Easel Monster to have a potty mouth. I, I mean, you know, I, I. That's just that's me. That's not a. I mean, you know, I've seen those cranky anchor things that I sometimes I think those things are just hilariously funny or can be, but nah, I'm with. I want. I want it to be family friendly. But I also want it to be art free and as you said uncensored and it's okay to me if art is a little dangerous sometimes and. You know, I like some of the mean attitudes toward children <laughs> that I think show up in some of the songs. Like, I, I want Easel Monster to have that. I think that's fun. It's fun for kids. I, uh, adults can be so politically correct, but kids still identify with mean, and mean yeah. is funny. <laughs> well, and that's, uh, I'm glad you brought up the songs because I wanted to talk about that too. It seems that just about every single episode of Paint Pie Monster has, uh, has like original song. Uh, and I think it's so great that you're you're working music into this. As it's not only just art, but you have a song every every episode. Thanks. Yeah, I'm I'm trying. I think that's one of the. You know, last year was my launch year, and then from March through September of this year, I had a seven month birthday. I turned fifty, and so I like you know what I'm going to do the stuff I have to do, but I'm going to read some books and goof off. And so I did. I had a seven-month sabbatical on my birthday this year. It was fantastic. But it also was an opportunity to look backward and, and take a distance view of the work. And, like, I think it's about 80% of the way there in terms of what the content of the show is. I mean, I think it could be really, really tightened up. And I think seven minutes is a better length than some of the more meandering things for now. Um, but when I try to okay, what are the components of the show? This equals a Paint by Monster episode, and if this doesn't have this, it's not really satisfying. And the songs seem to be one of those, no, without a song, it just sort of feels like you've not given something that you ought to have given. So, plus I like them, and I think that way. So, okay, try to put a song in. In fact, when you phone, like, I'm working on the song for this next episode, right? <laughs> just as you phone. Yeah. 
Well, I, I don't mean to take you away from that because it's one of my favorite no, parts. No, no, goodness, no, no, no. Yeah, the songs are just absolutely fantastic. And uh, as we wrap up here, I, I do want to ask one more question. And you kind of touched on this before about the special effects. Each episode of, of Paint by Monster, I mean, you're working you know, with a puppet against a green screen, but you're also working in miniature. You're also working with other green screen elements. Um, the the set that you have for Easel Monster to sit in uh, is just absolutely amazing. And and I know you already you kind of mentioned you like the special effects, but man, I would just love to talk more about uh, about the, the kind of stuff that goes into a, a Paint by Monster episode. Well, just about everything that shows up on the screen is at least three layers deep. I mean, there's puppetry footage. I, I have a couple of I, like I have a I have a full sized wall that I built to go behind Easel Monster that I've not used for the last couple of episodes because, well, I I I it needs repaired before I can use it. It's the fastest way for me to record something and get that on to a video. And so if for that reason alone, I need to get that repaired. But the miniature set, every single scene in the miniature set is a is an easel monster piece of footage. And use, well, up until recently, um, a, a photograph of the background from some particular angle. And then whatever is on the TV screen or the monitor screen behind easel that is the sort of informational part of what he's um, talking about that part all gets composited too. And all I, I put all of those things together in After Effects and then spit them out into a... I'm using Final Cut Pro X now. Uh, I tried, really tried, and had the hardest technical fight of my life to go to an all Adobe workflow and go from apps, After Effects CC and Premiere CC. And the dynamic link didn't work. It just and I'm using a Mac Pro. It's it's an amazingly fast tool. It's like owning an Olympic level weightlifter and ballet dancer all at the same time. It's so precise and so powerful. It's amazing. Um, but the the Premiere workflow did not work for me. I wish it had. But the moment I went to Final Cut, the very first day I bought Final Cut and loaded it on the machine. Um, it behaved exactly, it anticipated what I wanted to do. And I walked downstairs in tears and I said, oh, oh, it, it worked exactly the way it's supposed to work, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so every, every Easel Monster shot is at least three. But if there's animation going on on the screen behind Easel Monster, then I'm doing those things too. And I'm using After Effects to do all that stuff. And well, and Photoshop, I mean, you know, but yeah. I happened to oh, think the I other mean, day, like, man, I've been using Photoshop for 25 years. Wow, I was using Photoshop the first year it had layers. Wow. Well, I mean, the work you do on each episode is just amazing, and um, you know, I, I love that it's, I love that it's, uh, you know, it's you doing it. You don't have a crew of as much as I'm sure you'd love a crew uh, to help you with some of those tasks. Uh, it's just you doing it, and and it really shows how much love you have for the project. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I do. I. I it prob I mean you know you you make videos yourself and so you know the person who has watched every episode that you've ever made the most is you. That's you right. Know? And so I like I I'm trying to make the Paint by Monster episodes something that I want to go back and see and I'm I'm trying to be as entertaining as I as I know to be but I also know that you know, like an editor another mind on the process because I'm with you it's nice to be autonomous and just to get to do the stuff that you want to do and roll along with it I think I'd have a better work product if there were other editorial eyes on what I was doing and other editorial minds on what I was doing like you know and I've talked to my wife about that my wife finished up a few years ago her master's in uh, 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 educational she can be a principal um Educational administration. So, I mean, she comes out of an educational kind of thinking background. And I've asked her a couple of times, like, I would really, I, I think I need to be familiar with the, a, a pedagogy for teaching seventh grade art. You know, I think that would be really helpful for me. I mean, I'm, not because I'm looking for ideas. Like, no, I have enough ideas. I'm looking for, I, I know that I want to be doing things regularly. And I know that teaching is a component of what's going on. And I'd like to be considerate of, teaching in a processional way so that 
someone might actually learn something as they watch the show. <laughs> um, and I think that would be easier if there were more people other than just me. I mean, like, you know, I've told so many people, like, if something breaks on the set, i got to fix that. If I have a lighting problem, I have to fix that. If I have an editorial, if I have a glitch in how the computer is operating, like, I, there's nobody, to, like, i got to fix that. That can be a four-hour fix. And so there are times when I sit here and go, I wonder if I'm crazy. <laughs> I could be spending my time any way that I want to. And what I think is important right now is painting this miniature glue bottle white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so, but I love doing it. And I, I love my office and I love the space. And I, I feel like this year at, at 50 years old, I feel like I am the most potent version of myself that has ever been in terms of capable and like, no, it feels like it's just time to really get to work now and, and spend this next decade doing Paint My Monster just as hard as you can. Well, I that excites me to no end because I am one of uh, Easel Monster's biggest fans and one of your biggest fans. So I'm very excited. Uh, as we as we close out here, if people want to check out your work, where can they go? Um, YouTube. And look up Paint by Monster. Okay. I will put a link to that in the in the show notes as well. Thank you. There is also a Facebook fan page where, because of the way Facebook is functioning these days, I am also doing an episode of that episode, uh, excuse me, an upload of each individual episode to Facebook. But, re I mean, it because of the way everything is set up, uh, any audience that grows over on Facebook, they'll know it. I, I don't know that I'll know it per se, but I'm I'm looking at audience numbers from the YouTube page, and to me, that's where Easel Monster lives. All right. Well, I will put links to all those things in the show notes. And, Dan, thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate it. Grant, thank you so much, and, and, and uh, thank you for all of your work. Thanks for doing this, and thanks for thinking of me and... and uh, uh, let's talk anytime you ever want to. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks. I'll call you tomorrow morning at three in the morning. Okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Wright is an artist and the creator of the amazing web series Paint by Monster, which you can find by searching Paint by Monster on YouTube or searching for the YouTube user Easel Monster. You can also find Paint by Monster on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Easel Monster. 15 Minutes with on the Grantcast is a production of Saturday Morning Media and made possible by the Saturday Morning Media Patreon patrons who've gone to patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media and set up a monthly donation for as little as a dollar a month. Huge thanks to Shea Stewart, Mer Lafferty, Jeff Peterson, Dale Gadania, Stephen Staver, Jackie Klimo, Melissa Crawford, Chuck, Matthew Wayne Selznick, Dave Slusher of the Evil Genius Chronicles, Mike Conflin, Dorothy Bachoco, John D., Kathy Crawford, Brian Greer, Carrie Whitney, Chuck Tomasi, Chris Foster, Stephen Ng, Clinton of ComedyForecast.com, Vicky DeVries, Mike Wabshaw, Twitter user Butts and Gear, a.k.a. Wildcat, Eve Cunning, Mike Hamilton, Gaston Morineau, Reed Loveland, and brand new patron Ivan Asquith. If you'd like to support this show and the other fun content from Saturday Morning Media, become a patron. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash Saturday Morning Media and set up your monthly donation today. You can also tell a friend about the show or leave the show a review on iTunes. And while you're over there in iTunes, be sure to click that subscribe button. That way you will get episodes the moment they are delivered. If you have feedback for the show, you can send it to me directly at grant at throwingtoasters.com or get in touch via Twitter, where my username is ToasterBoy. Thank you for tuning in. I'll talk to you next time. The Grant Cast is copyright 2016 Saturday Morning Media, Grant Pachoco, Executive Producer, all rights reserved. www.saturdaymorningmedia.com You've been listening to Saturday Morning Media. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs>